Well, hello from the Yellow Room. Over the weekend, I got a chance to watch Around the Verse 3.8 and Reverse the Verse 2.8. And rather than re- and rather than react to it, I actually just wanted to have kind of a QA session and maybe a theory session with you guys um, on on those two episodes specifically. Right off the bat, two days in two days, I'm I'm really pumped. I'm going to be heading up. I'm going to be heading over to the Bar Citizen in New York City. Looking forward to kind of shooting this shit and having a good time with you guys talking about. And basically, it's my first star or uh, Bar Citizen, so I'm going to be soaking up every little bit of information you guys you guys can give. I'm also curious the for uh, curious about the format of Bar Citizen as well. I don't know if there's like a pre-planned pre-planned agenda, pre-planned agenda, or if everyone just goes in and they just start drinking and talking about their favorite parts of Star Citizen. Anyway, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. So can't wait. In regards to around the verse three point eight, the first had to do the first segment was had to do with weapon updates and what uh, the new weapon models that the team was working on. These weapon updates just really confirmed uh, to me that the weapons. Um, all the weapons are kind of going to kind of get to have predefined looks and shells, so to speak. So, really, the only differentiation this goes back to my Star Wars video in terms of weapons. The only real differentiation it looks like is going to become is going to be coming in the form of mods and tuning, barring the fact that there's other differentiations um, with other industries or trades. But for weapons in particular, it looks like they're really going for there's a certain amount of every type weapon maker, so to speak, a type is going to have a certain look and. They're going to be made out of certain materials and whatnot. So the customization or modder or tuner um, would have to come after the fact, after the weapon's already built. So that was just that was just more clarification, solidification around the, that idea. So it's, it's, it's much clearer to me now. All the modular satellite stuff made sense to me. The, um, the six faces or the six points of connection, uh, the guy that was working on it basically said that that was for prototyping. So it kind of sounded like they were going to give us um, maybe some ang- angles. Maybe there would be like a 25, 35, or 45 degree connection points. It sounded like there would be certain types of components that would have different kinds of angles. And even giving us a little bit, a little variety, a little variation on the angles, like it's basically exponential in, in the amount of uh, different variety of visual looks we can achieve with just give us a couple different angles rather than just like the six-sided die uh, type of connections the modular buildings you guys are gonna you guys are gonna absolutely hate me <laughs> for this so i apologize ahead of time i'm just wondering how they're gonna handle like the modular building blocks and still like get some sort of semblance of variety in terms of what we're looking at and and i get it like in a real world scenario we go and visit we we go and visit other planets there's not going to be a lot of variety everything's going to be very modular and all the, the stations and the habitats and the living quarters and the, all that stuff the growing areas everything all that's going to be very modular and in a real world that would be very boring visually in terms of variety but then again this is a game you know what i mean so i'm wondering if they can it seemed like and especially with chris's comments afterwards about how they're going to have a lot of modular components. They're going to put the modular components together, but they're really going to, all the character is going to come out in like the dressing up with the, the props and um, stuff like that. It really sounded like they weren't, there wasn't going to be a lot of variation in the looks of all the buildings on, on the planets. So it was, I don't know, it, sounded, it was a little bit of a concern, not a concern, but just like, you know, we ran, we've, we've continually run into this type of thing with other games, but. So it was actually when I was watching, I was actually thinking to myself, what could they, what could they possibly do to, you know, to, to keep the, the whole goal is obviously to maintain some sort of quick generation or quick uh, population. They're able to populate the planets pretty, uh, pretty quickly. So what could they do? I don't know. Maybe if they had some sort of like single access scaling in buildings, so they can lay down like a like a square. A modular building but they could scale it in just like depth or width so they could actually just scale it out this way and all the textures would all the textures would basically scale with it or propagate appropriately but then you can get some then you can get a variety of shapes really quick so they could pop it down literally just click an access and drag it out or something like that and then you know they could have a, re- a big long rectangular 
uh, building block. Or maybe all of this stuff is already in there and we just I'm just talking out my ass. And another idea I potentially had was maybe there's some sort of above ground and underground versions of different buildings. So there's like a a, a quick a quick modular underground bunker type of building where it's instead of just like an air hatch, a you know horizontal go into an air uh, air hatch. There's a hatch from the top or something, or maybe even like an elevator that goes down into the building. So the assets inside the building could be the same, but it's essentially below and above ground. Um, I haven't actually heard anything about underground facilities, so maybe again, maybe the, maybe they're they're planning on that that as well. Other than that, you know, I mean, they gotta have a system in place that's that's quick to use, you know, that they can easily pump out designs. But so the the reason I said don't kill me was because. It, you know, if, if you're coming across the same place after 50 times on the 50th different planet and all of them look alike, I mean, you know, it's not going to feel as fresh, I guess, you know. So, I mean, maybe some quick, quick, quick things ahead of time to aid in the modularity of these, these building blocks would be, would be cool. But again, we probably don't have the whole story. Actually, going back to the satellites for a second, there was a lot of conversation or one of the questions revolved around the interior of a satellite. And this is actually this is actually a question that came up on Reverse the Verse uh, 2.8. Um, in terms of a uh, question came up in terms of the interior of satellites. And it's not, he, the answer was kind of a bit vague, but he did say you could get around and explore a little bit in terms of you could like go in and hack a computer but that was the only reference I actually heard to being able to not just see inside but you could actually walk inside and do stuff inside of a satellite so that's kind of cool that he did he did say you could go in and hack it so maybe I'm hoping it's not just like you go out to an exterior uh access point on the satellite and you're able to hack a computer so I'm hoping you can actually go into the actually walk around inside the satellites and explore there could be all sorts of cool things you find in there even like dead bodies with coordinates on it or something scratched on a wall message in blood I mean that's that's or even a message in there could be like a folder laying out that that leads to a resource look I don't know whatever anyway there could be a lot of cool stuff that, that's that's apparent inside of it versus inside of a satellite versus outside. They also mentioned destructible satellites, and they weren't sure if you're gonna be able to fully destroy a satellite or just key components. So it does sound like you could do the whole corporate sabotage thing, so I can actually be, I could be a black ops satellite disruptor, right? So people would know me for satellite disruption, and I get hired by other corporations to go out, mess with, um, other other corporation satellites and stuff so that'd be, that, that's kind of cool fully destroy satellites i kind of get there wasn't a solid answer on that it didn't sound like they were pushing toward fully destructible satellites but even the destroying the individual components will be kind of will be kind of key the thought i had on these is could you potentially hack and maybe replace modules so you're not just destroying stuff but you actually can replace a module and i don't know, I actually have a good i don't have a good um example but <laughs> like replace a module to kind of make a corporation satellite work for you. Maybe an idea is you could use it as kind of a, a transference point for uh, data, info running data that, that that's being used. <laughs> so you can actually, a corporation doesn't even know it, but their, their satellite's being used to relay information uh, <laughs> across the universe. Stuff like that, stuff like that would be really, really neat. And the only way for a corporation to combat that is to actually, they have maintenance. They have to actually hire people to go up and perform maintenance checks on their satellites. Oh my god. Tell me how cool that would be. Also, there was confirmation that the satellite parts were for satellites only, so there goes my mobile satellite idea where I can turn my ship into a satellite. Uh, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. But it doesn't, it doesn't sound like that's going to happen either. They also shot down the idea of player-controlled satellites, and I mean, shot it down in terms of like the first pass. There might be some uh, content, future content that the content that they had. Speaking of which, though, I guess I don't know much about satellites. Like, how do you launch satellites in the first place, or how they plan on launching them? Since they're not player controlled, is it just like you go to a, a station and buy a, buy a satellite and launch it, and it performs a certain function? You obviously there's parts, so you can have to go up and maintain it and stuff. So I'm wondering, wondering how the actual satellite purchase and launch process. Is planned at least, I guess, right now. And, he, and they did talk a little bit about satellite defenses, which we were all hoping for, I guess. Maybe, so maybe the approach to a satellite, 
like a military satellite. Maybe you'll need like heavy a ship with heavy EMP capabilities or disruption or even info running. Maybe you can maybe you can like kind of hack into the defenses on a satellite to get in without noticing. There's gonna be there's the way they described it. There's gonna be a lot of a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool angles you can you can do with that. There's a couple questions in the reverse the burst visual stabilization section. Um, the first was <laughs> it sounded like they skipped right over a turret question. Um, I didn't even know that existed. This you can, you can man. I mean, mostly because I probably haven't played with other players yet, so I've been mostly soloing it. So I'm assuming you could take over a turret, and that turret has some sort of head bobbing or motion with it as well. So I think the question that they skipped over, I think it had to do with <clears throat> the stabilization, would kind of smooth that out as well. That's just that's just a guess though. The very last thing that kind of was interesting, I just kind of wanted some more information on if any of you guys had it. It sounds like they're switching. There was mention of like normal games have like a three rig uh, character animation system to handle to handle to be able to handle multiplayer. Uh, most games have kind of a three rig system. I think it's one for the the camera, one for like shadows and stuff like that, and then one for like the the body that you see if you look down. So a properly done takes like three rig system. So. But then, it's not, but then they said that they were working on a unified rig. So there's one rig which would greatly reduce the resource cost. They wouldn't have to use as many different animations. They could combine certain animations so they don't have to have three walking animations. They could just have one uh, for the one unified rig. So my question is, is this new technology? Like, uh, is other companies, I guess, why, are, why aren't unified rigs like the standard? So I'm wondering if this is kind of something new, conceptually new that that a CIG has been working on for for this game. And it's kind of, it was, just harkens back to the, again, the old days of modeling when, but then again, I was modeling for animation and not for game design. So I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of technical reasons for using three rigs over one. Yeah, other than that, man, it's, it's other than that, this was, this was another solid, solid week of um, uh, around the burst and reverse the verse questions and uh, information. And lastly, I kind of just want to, Second, Tyler's shout out to uh, Utho Riley's music. Um, I was in a car most of the weekend driving, <laughs> and it made the playlist for probably about sixty percent of the time. I was I was jamming out to his um, Star Citizen inspired music. So good job. <laughs> it was it's very enjoyable. All right, guys, looking forward to Around the Verse three point nine later this week. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any answers to the questions that I had that I asked, please leave them in the comments. Let's talk about it. And let me know if you like the yellow room. All right, guys.